Don't kick a dead horse when you're out soul winning. Right. Now, I'm all for people being thorough, okay? I'm thorough when I go soul winning. What does it mean to be thorough? It means that you cover all the points and you make sure that the person you're talking to understands all the points. Now, there are people out there, not at our church, that I haven't really seen this at our church ever. If anything, I've seen people go overboard in the other direction of being too thorough, quote unquote. But I've been to other churches where people are not thorough. Okay. And you, if you've been soul winning at other churches, you've seen this kind of one, two, three, repeat after me, where it's just a, a slipshod, blast through a couple verses, all right, let's pray, A, B, C, repeat after me, one, two, you know, and it's just you're blasting through it, and the person doesn't really get anything or change what they believe or anything. Obviously, we don't do that. We've never done that. We don't believe in that, okay? But what I often see in churches of our stripe is people going overboard in the other direction where they just beat a dead horse because they're so afraid of not being thorough that they go too far in the other direction and they beat a dead horse. Listen to me. Longer is not always better. Oh, your gospel presentation took 10 minutes? Well, mine took 20. That means I did twice as well and I was twice as thorough as you were. No, that's not necessarily true. So here's the thing. Being thorough means you're not leaving out anything necessary and you're making sure that that person understands. So look, if it's an easy door, if it's a receptive person that's just ready to hear the gospel and, and catches on quick, it can take 10 minutes, friend. And you know what? You can go out and criticize me and say, oh, Pastor Anderson is only spending 10 minutes. Well, you know what? Why would I spend 20 minutes if I can do a better job in 10 minutes? than somebody else could do in 20 minutes because they're beating a dead horse. In fact, here's why 10 minutes is better because of the fact that you're less likely to get interrupted. You're less likely to lose the person's interest, lose their attention. Why would I beat a dead horse? Now look, if the person is not as receptive, not as smart, then it takes longer. I mean, you know, I won somebody Lord a couple weeks ago that just wasn't that smart. Really nice person really receptive to the gospel, but just not the sharpest tool in the shed. And so it took me like a half hour just to get through my basic, and it wasn't because there were any objections or any hangups. There were no hangups. It just took 30 minutes because I had to explain everything repeatedly and give lots of illustrations because of the fact that this woman just wasn't really that smart, okay? So yeah, I, I mean, I've given to the gospel to people who had Down syndrome where it took 45 minutes or an hour to explain the gospel. I've given the gospel to people who were, say, a dyed-in-the-wool Mormon or a dyed-in-the-wool Catholic where they have all this baggage of false doctrine where I've spent literally an hour or two hours with somebody going over this stuff and, 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 and kind of dismantling all this false doctrine they believe. You know, I rode around with a guy for my job one time in the fire alarm business. I rode around with this Pentecostal guy for like seven or eight hours, just going from location to location, testing fire suppression systems with this guy. And it was just a lot of driving. And I mean, I was preaching the gospel for like seven hours. And then he finally got saved. And he said, my Baptist in-laws are going to be real happy, he said. Because they've been trying to convert me to this doctrine for years. And I'm thinking, praise the Lord, I could be an answer to prayer to his in-laws. Because he was a Pentecostal. He had false doctrine about tongues and losing your salvation. So yeah, sometimes it becomes a marathon with people where you end up talking to them and you need to. But look, being thorough does not mean kicking a dead horse and just going on and on and on for no reason. Look, these are the basic points of the gospel. Number one, we've all sinned. Number two, we all deserve to go to hell. Number three, Jesus loves us. He died for us. He was buried. He rose again. He was our sacrifice. He's God in the flesh. You know, just the basic, who is Jesus, our Savior? Okay, number four, salvation is through believing on Jesus. It's not through our works. It's not through our deeds. It's not through being good. It's not through giving up our sins. It's through faith in Jesus only, right? Not by our works. And then the final point I would say is really critical is that once you're saved, 
you're always saved. You can never lose your salvation. He'll never leave us or forsake us. We have eternal life. Okay, so here's the thing. I don't spend five minutes or seven minutes or eight minutes telling someone that they're a sinner because 99% of people already know that. How often do you really run into somebody that says, I'm not a sinner, I don't sin? You already have people at hello on that point. They get it instantly. That's why I show them Romans 3.23 and I'm done. Hey, we've all sinned, right? Oh yeah, of course. Next point. I'm not just going to park it there and, well, let's go through each of the Ten Commandments just to make sure that you really know how many times you've sinned. Let me just show you sins you've never even thought about or heard of. I just show them we've all sinned and they say, of course. Okay, time to move on. Next point. There's beating a dead horse and there's being thorough and they're very different, okay? Number two, I show them that we all deserve to go to hell. Now, this is something that most people don't believe out of the gate. Some do, some don't. I take them to, primarily on this point, Revelation 21.8. Because it lists a whole bunch of sins and everybody has done something on that list. Especially when it says all liars. And I usually just say to the people, hey, I know I've lied before. Have you ever lied? Of course. Well, where does the Bible say that all liars are going? To hell. So if we got what we deserved, we'd all go to hell. So I show them. This is the order that I show the verse. I go Romans 3.23, 6.23, wages of sin is death, Revelation 20.14 and 15, and then I show them Revelation 21.8. Okay, so I spend a few minutes on the fact that the punishment is hell, we all deserve it. And then I say, but God loves us. If God loves us, do you think God wants us to go to hell? Of course not. But was he just kidding when he said this? No. How can we be saved? And then I go into the whole thing of, Jesus died for us, Romans 5, 8. Okay, I explain the whole story of Jesus, the gospel. I explain that it's only by faith by going to verses like Acts 16, 31 and John 3, 16. Now, if I show somebody Acts 16, 31, I've already shown that we're all condemned, we all deserve it. If I show somebody Acts 16, 31 and John 3, 16, and they just right away see, yeah, it's, by, it's just by believing in Christ. What must I do to be saved? Believe. And they just get that right away. And it's obvious that they get it. Next point, they got it. And then I move on to the eternal security point. And I spend, well, how much time? As much as is necessary. Not less time than is necessary and not more time than is necessary. And obviously, if you're going to err to one side or the other, it's better to err on the side of being too thorough. Obviously, if you have to choose between being a little too shallow and a little too thorough, it's better to go a little overboard and be a little too thorough, okay? So don't get up and say, oh, Pastor Anderson's promoting shallow soul winning. You know, the people who come at us with that garbage are usually people who don't even go soul winning. Right. Why don't you come soul winning with me and tell me what I'm leaving out? Why don't you go slow with me and tell me who I'm not being thorough with? Because like I said, I'll slow down and take 20, 30, 40 minutes if needed. But if they're getting it, I move on. I don't beat a dead horse. So my minimum on the point of that it's by faith alone, my minimum, the least that I would show anyone, I always show them Acts 16, 30 and 31 and John 3, 16. And I like John 3, 16 because everybody's heard it before. So it resonates with people. Oh, that, that's what that's saying. But if I don't get the feeling that, they, that that point has fully clicked with them, then I'll show them John 3.18, 3.36. It's right there. It's on the same page. 3.18, 3.36. Flip them over to 5.24 in the book of John. 6.40, 6.47, 10.28, you know, 11.25 and 26 if they need it. I'll support it with more, but if, as soon as they get it, we move on to the point about eternal security. My primary point on eternal security, the believer, is about the illustration about the gift in Romans 6.23. And I also use the illustration about a father and a son from John 1.12, where if, uh, you know, if, you, if your child disobeys, you're going to discipline them but you're not going to throw them out of the family, right? And it's the same way with God. If God's our father and if we sin, he'll discipline us if we break his commandments, but he's not going to send us to hell 
once we've been saved, right? So I use the gift illustration, how a gift, it's free, you get to keep it, it's eternal. I explain what eternal means. I explain about the father and the child. And I go through all that. And, and if I explain all that properly and thoroughly, and the person is clearly with me and understanding and getting it, okay, then that's the end of the gospel presentation. So then what I do is just a quick wrap up where I say, okay, let me just ask you a couple questions. Yes. Do you what do you believe personally that a person has to do to get into heaven? Sometimes at this point they'll say, be good, live a good life. That tells me everything I told them just went over the head. And I just say, you know what? All right. Hey, it's been great talking to you. That's not, you know, it's not that. It's believe, all right? It's by faith alone. But hey, you know, come visit our church sometime. If it just completely just went over their head, right? Okay, I'm done here. You know, be friendly. So, At least I planted a seed. Here are some points about, and I realize I'm blasting through this, but it's for sake of time. Here's, you know, we got the three and a half hour DVD. You know, go download the other 10 sermons on this, or better yet, show up at a soul winning time and get your butt out there and learn how to do this the right way. But go to Romans chapter 10, if you would. Romans chapter number 10.